Imagine building a house that is a mix of all your favorite styles. What would that look like? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Today we are exploring the eclectic mansion known as Hammond Castle. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of this house. John Hayes Hammond Jr. started off with an all but normal life. His father, John Sr., moved his family from San Francisco, California to South Africa to work as a mining engineer, where his mechanically inclined son first took an interest in engineering. Later on, John Sr. again relocated his family to England, where John Jr. was inspired by European architecture and art. Though there was one trip that was especially impactful to John Jr.'s future path. When he was only 12 years old, his father took him on a business trip to the United States. There they would meet with Thomas Edison in his New Jersey laboratory. John Jr. was blown away by everything he saw, and his excitement could not be contained. He began asking Edison so many questions that Edison decided to take on the 12-year-old John Jr. as his mentor. It was no surprise that by the time John Jr. had reached adulthood, he had soaring recommendations to attend the finest colleges. He studied at Yale University, where he met Alexander Graham Bell, who also became his mentor. It was around this time that John Jr. began experimenting with radio control, or as we call it today, remote control. He is credited with creating the multi-channel radio system, variable pitch propeller control, radio alarm systems, and submarine sound transmission, laying the groundwork for unmanned aerial vehicles and drones. Over the course of his life, he filed more than 800 patents. His revolutionary inventions made him incredibly wealthy, and with his wealth, he revisited his childhood dream of living out an old-world European fantasy. He began collecting European art and antiques and desired to display them properly in a castle. But there was one problem. The artifacts he had acquired were all from different European time periods. He purchased land in the North Shore region of Massachusetts and brought in the architectural firm of Allen and Collins to begin working on a solution to his problem. In 1923, they presented him with a plan to create a castle that transcended European history by morphing as it continued on to comply with the various architectural styles appropriate for displaying period artwork. First, they designed a research laboratory to be modern in every way, then built a 13th century inspired tower to its side. The next section of the house was inspired by a 13th century Gothic cathedral, then a 15th century French chateau. Following these independent portions of the house, the laboratory was wrapped with cloisters and a bell tower to create a more cohesive experience from the gardens. The result was a castle of the ages. This eclectic combination of styles led to a meandering stone facade boasting towers and arcades with stained glass reminiscent of rose windows found in European cathedrals. Flying buttresses could be found rising from the gardens to support the expansive ceilings. Connecting the gardens, you could travel through mouse holes between the various sections of the facades and encounter bell towers and follies offering breathtaking views of the bay. As we make our way through the castle, make sure to let me know what you think of each room down below in the comments section. Entering the home, you would arrive in the Great Hall, with gothic arches soaring below a rose window. Here you could find a shrine housing a 600-year-old Buddha statue set before three pointed arches in a nave. Here you could also find one of the largest pipe organs in the world, boasting over 8,000 pipes. John Jr., though he had designed most of the pipe organ, was unable to play the instrument, so he invited many of the world's greatest musicians to perform for him in the Great Hall. Transitioning styles, we will now travel to the library, overflowing with books as you open the French doors to pass through fluted columns. The windows rounded out in the tower, with stone mullions encasing wood-framed windows with wrought iron bars. The courtyard was designed to appear as a medieval village, with each face boasting a different architectural style. Housed under a glass ceiling, tropical plants flourished around the pool. Steam vents were hidden below the water to heat the courtyard and provide adequate humidity to the exotic plants year-round. The dining room sat in the shadows, behind heavy drapes, with light reflecting from the patterned tile floor and shimmering collection of china. In another tower, the war room housed John Jr.'s collections relating to European wars, including busts of military leaders and books telling of their conquests. The many bedrooms were decorated in the styles of various travels, with art and textiles building the setting and the ambience of an intercontinental experience. Even a side chapel could be found in a node with Gothic windows carved from stone merging with the groin vault above a stone hearth. John lived out the rest of his life happily in this castle, along with his lover Henry Davis Sleeper. Together, they hosted massive parties with live music, inviting some of the world's top musicians to perform as their guests feasted and danced through the halls. Upon John's death, the pipe organ rang out one last time, 
echoing throughout the halls. Several musical artists had returned to play tributes to their good old friend. Fortunately, the castle was immediately sealed as a time capsule and opened to the public as a house museum, which continues to host thousands of guests every year. What did you think about this castle? Make sure to let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.